Hey everybody, welcome to today's Wednesday's Word. My name is Keith, I'm one of the pastors here at Zion United Methodist Church, and I'm just so glad that you're along with me today as we continue to look at the book of 1 John. And we are in chapter 4, and we are going to look at uh, another dimension to our Christian walk, our Christian faith. And so uh, we are starting in verse 11 here. I'll read through verse 16 in 1 John uh, chapter 4. And so if you have your Bibles, you can open them up to 1 John 4 verse 11. It says this, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So today what I'd like to do is focus on a part of that last verse, in verse 16, because I think that it helps to capture the point that I'd like to make. And we look at this, it says, so we have come to know and believe, to believe the love that God has for us. And of course, we've been talking about God's love, that God has loved us. He has shown his love through the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is our Savior. And we praise God for that, um, that he's given to us a Savior in Jesus Christ. And then we're called to love God, or love God and then love our neighbor as well. Um, and, and what I'd like to focus on in this verse 16 is, is these, uh, these two words, and then I want to add another, um, another concept as well to it. But it says, we have come to know and to believe. Okay, And so um, I think what, what we see here is uh, two different ideas, and they both are important aspects of our faith. Um, the first one that I want to point out is to believe. Um, to believe is the uh, Greek word pisteo, and it means to, to have faith in, to trust in, to have confidence in. And when we, when we come to a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, we come through faith in what he has done. We hear the gospel message of what Christ has done for us, that he has died for us, that he has been raised from the dead, he, he's He's died that death of the cross, the atoning sacrifice that, that God has uh, made for us on the cross through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's our belief in him that we are saved uh, because of his finished work. Um, and, and that is the, really the, the door that, um, that opens us up to eternal life. It, it, it starts with believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. The second thing that we've seen, and we've seen this throughout the entire book of 1 John, we see it throughout the scriptures, um, has to do with, with love. It's, it's receiving God's love, but then it's also loving God and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. And so I would, um, I would say that that is the second aspect of our walk with Jesus, and that I would call obedience. Obedience is to love, not just in word, uh, in speech, but actually loving in deed and in truth. And so we are called to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're saved. But we're also called uh, to obey and to do what Christ has done for us. Okay, so that's the second aspect. The third aspect is what I see here in verse 16 and that is, he says, so we have come to know the love of God. Okay, so um, knowing here is this word ginosko in the Greek. And it is a word that means 
first-hand knowledge or first-hand experience. Um, it's, a, it's a word that means that I know something, not just I know about it, I know information about it, but I actually know it. I've experienced it. I've, I've, I've done it. It's one thing to um, read a manual on how to, to fly an airplane um, and, and to know about it and to, and to study it. It's another thing to actually get up in the airplane and fly. And that's why you have to put in a lot of time in the training and uh, hours in the air so that you become uh, a you know, good pilot if, if that's what you want to pursue. There's, there's one thing to know about something. There's another thing to um, actually know it and to have firsthand experience. And so what I want you to picture is like a three-legged stool where you have these three aspects of our of our faith or our walk with Jesus. The first one, like I said, is is belief, and, and the second one is obedience. The third one is um, experience or to know Jesus. And I think that's what um, John is getting at here: is that um, our faith is more than just uh, belief. Okay, belief is important. We need to believe right doctrine. We need to know the word. And so we need to study the word. We need to understand it. We need to believe it. And belief has more to do with what we are hoping in. We believe in, in things that we don't see with our eyes. That's why we, we call it belief. It's, it's trusting. It's having confidence in. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I wasn't actually there to see him do it, but it's written in his word and I believe it. It's the gospel. I believe it. Um, but knowing Jesus is a completely different thing. Um, it's, it's actually experiencing his presence. And so how do we um, know Jesus? Not just believe in him, but to actually know him. And what's interesting, he talks here a lot about, uh, he, he's talked about it in chapter 3. He said, by this we know, in verse 24, by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Um, he continues on, uh, chapter 4, verse 6, he says, By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Uh, he's talking about the Holy Spirit there. And then he's here in the reading today, he talks about how a God abides in us and we abide in him. And so here's the point I want to make to you, that um, knowing God is actually, it's, it's something that God wants us to experience. And it has to do with the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus promises us that when we believe in him and we become born again, that he gives to us his Holy Spirit. You know, we see this in John chapter 14. He says he will not uh, leave us as orphans, but he will come to us. And he comes to us in the form of the Holy Spirit. And he gives us a new heart and he gives us his Holy Spirit. And that spirit within us actually reveals God's love in a very tangible, real way. Um, and so we pursue um, that. We, we have to pursue um, the presence of the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Spirit of God is within us if we're believers in Christ. But we really have to um, pursue uh, the Spirit's presence through prayer and spending time with the Lord. Um, and so there's some there's just persistence in our lives to, to continue to seek after the Lord's presence. And what happens is that the Holy Spirit will reveal the love of God to us, reveal the peace of God. Uh, we'll fill our hearts with that love and that joy and that peace. And that's that's a supernatural experience. Uh, I can't really explain it. I've experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, and, and I admit there are times when I'm not pursuing uh, the presence of God like I should. Um, but every time that I do pursue God's presence and ask God to reveal his presence and his love to me, he makes himself available to me. And, and I feel that I experience that. And so, um, you know, if, if again, if, if you think about the three legs of of our Christian walk, like I explained, you know, believing um right doctrine, believing in, in the right, uh, in the word that we, that we know, believing in the truth is the first one. Um, the second one is obedience. It's, it's loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. And then the third one, knowing Christ, really knowing the presence and the love of God through the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
what I've noticed in in a lot of people is that um, they might have one or two of those aspects of the Christian faith um, that you know they really have it uh, nailed down they really understand it but they they're lacking in another area so typically what I see is people who have been in the church a really long time they they have the right beliefs they know the right doctrines they believe the right things okay there's so they're not believing heresies they know the word they've studied the word for decades they understand it they believe it and they might even live their lives um, pursuing to uh, be obedient to God and and loving their neighbors they love themselves and so they're obedient and they get that second aspect of their walk but they really have never experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit they've never um, either they've never been taught about the Holy Spirit or they just they don't really understand it they don't know uh, much about it and what happens is if you don't have that experience ongoing experience it's really an everyday uh, experience with the Holy Spirit knowing his love for you um, your faith can become kind of like dry and um, it, it, it can become just kind of tiresome and you feel like you're just um, trying to obey God just to be obedient and there's really no life there's no excitement there's no fire um, you know it, it becomes a very dry faith um, there's other people that they only exp they only pursue after the experience and so they just want these mystical experiences. they want these supernatural spiritual experiences but they don't really want to obey and that's a dead faith that's what James says you know faith without works is dead and so we we really uh, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ we have that experience of his presence and a relationship with him um, and from that proceeds uh, good works from that proceeds spiritual giftedness so that I can um, I can carry out the calling that God's placed on my life okay so um, I want to encourage you I don't, I don't know where you are in your walk if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ you need to start there you need to just acknowledge your sin confess it to the Lord repent of your sin trust in Christ he has died for you he's been raised from the dead and he forgives you of your sin when you believe in him, you trust in him. When you do that, God will come into your life. And then you want to pursue the presence of the Holy Spirit. You want to pursue his love and to know him, to have a relationship with him. Um, that, that he is real to you. His, the experience of his presence is very real. Um, and from there, um, you want to... Just allow God to live his life through you is, is essentially what it is, that you obey the teachings of the Lord, that you love your neighbor um, as you love yourself and ultimately love your neighbor as Christ has loved you, as a, as a servant, as, a, as somebody who sacrifices for others and blesses them, um, helps other people. Um, and that's really the outpouring of love. God pours that love into your heart, and then that love is just poured out into other people. And that's ultimately what God wants to see uh, in your life and in my life. So I hope that this is helpful for you. Um, you know, it's, I know that if you've never really experienced the presence of the Holy Spirit, you may say, I, I don't really get that. It doesn't make sense to me. I want to encourage you, if you've never um, experienced God's presence like that, you need to just sit quietly, pray, ask God to reveal his spirit to you. Ask God to reveal his love to you. And you do it in the quiet of, of your own prayer closet. And it's more than praying for two or three minutes. This is really pursuing God. Saying, God, I really want to know your loving presence. And I guarantee you, um, when you wait on the Lord and you pursue him with all of your heart, he will reveal that to you. And, and that will deepen your relationship with the Lord. It's amazing. Um, you know, that God is there all along. It's just we've never opened our eyes to him we've never been awakened to it so i want to encourage you take that time even today um just sit you know quietly and ask for god's presence to be manifest to you that, that you would know his spirit's presence that you would know his love and he's faithful he'll reveal that to you so hopefully uh you'll have that opportunity take that opportunity and may god bless you um, as you continue to pursue him to pursue his love and to pursue uh, showing his love in this world. God bless you and have a great week.